Austin joining me here for Sports and Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max Live 365 here tonight. iHeartRadio, one of the up and coming biggest artists in the game right now. Make sure you're tapped in with him, Austin. He's got the new EP on the way. So much things, so many great things on the way. Got the new Crush single out. Make sure you go check that out. But welcome to the show, man. How's everything going? Appreciate you. Uh, yeah, everything's great. Just uh, getting ready for tour. Um, coming up in honestly like a week and getting this project out. It's kind of all happening at once. So uh, it's been a busy last couple months. What a night to be on tour. That's right. That's, That's right. Tour. Where are you? You hit New York first? Uh, no, we're in Chicago, and then we're off to New York. Then you're that. off to New York. Yep. Where are you looking forward to performing on the tour? Honestly, I mean, I do love New York. I can't lie. And I'm going to be in I'm going to be in New York for like three days. Um, so long as I'll be in a city while I'm on tour. So uh, honestly, that I think it'd be nice to just uh, perform there and have some downtime. Um, and by downtime, I mean, just like press stuff and uh, <laughs> enjoying the food around the city. <laughs> I heard that you I don't know. It was around a difficult time to be just learn about you, but you hit the city for a couple of days and you're not naturally a partier, but New York brought out the the partier side of you. <laughs> it did. It did for sure. Um, we went out, uh, me and a bunch of my friends went out for fashion week in February. Um, it was the first time I'd ever been to New York and like I had, I had done New York for like one day before, but it was like so brief that it was kind of just flew by. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was right after a breakup, um, and just went out with some homies, and uh, we were there for like a week. Super, super incredible time. It like opened my eyes to like what going out and you know having a good time kind of actually feels like. Yeah, it's tough for creatives. I, I kind of get your sentiment, just me learning about you, because you you're always focused on yourself. You're locked in, so it's tough to go out and have a good time. Totally, totally. Yeah, I'm such like a. I'm naturally such an introvert that if you give me any excuse to stay in the crib, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I 100% get it. But I, I, let's talk about this upcoming EP, What a Night to Be in Love. What was the inspiration behind the title? Yeah, um, I mean, I've come out with so many, like, short projects um, in the past. I've been releasing music since, like, 2017. So for this one, I kind of wanted to go less narrative based and more of just a feeling. I feel like that's one of my uh, strengths as an artist is, you know, evoking emotion in other people. So I knew if I could write a project that was more focused on an emotion, it would feel a little bit more cohesive rather than a narrative that maybe not everyone can relate to. And they'd have to pick and choose. It's like every single one of these songs, people, it doesn't matter who you are, you're going to be able to feel it because it's about what everyone's after, you know, which is love at the end of the day. Now, is this based on the current climate we're living in now, or it's just a one night thing and done and you're out of here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I will, I will say, yeah, I do kind of touch on like love comes in many different ways and forms. And, you know, the, the definition is always evolving. Um, and it means different things to different people. So it's not just, classic love songs where it's all you know lovey-dovey it's it's got the the complicated in there it's got the more like you know depth um but i've i've never been one like that i'm i'm always tied up in a relationship non-stop um i just can't really be hopping around from from person to person it stresses me out disgusting if you want my honest opinion about it but you got the whole <laughs> song on there how soon so you move on pretty quickly i think with that breakup i was learning about it took you over a year i remember because you were a year into it but that's when you reflected on it we're able to make the songs off the last ep and with how soon yeah. so you move on quickly <clears throat> um yeah i mean I, i've been i've been known to kind of like check out uh a few months before um you know i've i didn't really know how to I didn't really know how to diagnose it at first until I talked to a couple of my friends and they were like, yeah, I feel like you kind of just check out and start moving on while you're already in the relationship, which is scary. It's a scary thing. But I, I've come to realize whenever those moments are happening, um, I'm in a great relationship right now and I don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, That's rare. Yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been great so far. Very rare. I, I I hope things work out. How does it feel? Because I mean, when I listen to your songs, I mean, we reflect back on it. People were just saying how much of a '90s vibe you give early 2000s, and that's what you're inspired by, especially with Bryson Tiller. He's more of the new guys, but I know your inspirations. We'll get into that. But how does it feel? I always say it's so difficult now as an R&B artist because 
it, it's not about love anymore. We don't, I don't know what's going on with the culture that we're living in, but all these artists that I talk to male and female that say that it's just a complete disaster in the dating scene. And it, I don't know how do you even convey that and bring two together if there's not love in the yeah. current era, it's hard. Yeah, no, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of people writing about toxic shit. I mean, I guess it's real. That's like, <laughs> that's, there's, there's something real about that. Like you say, in this, in this day and age, um, and we've we've all felt it some sort of you know heartbreak that kind of takes us a little over the edge and then we're like all right <laughs> about to get my lick back and then it's just a never ending cycle and yeah i don't i don't know i think i have noticed a bit of a an uptick in in some like love songs out there and some that like old r&b feeling coming back um and yeah i'm i'm glad to be a part of it so far Oh, that's big. Yeah, we need more artists like you. Maybe it'll change the the toxic culture around. <laughs> Let's pray that I love, it does. I love a toxic song. I do love a toxic song, even though it's like, I really can't relate to it that heavy, but <laughs> there's still something about it that I'm like, it's almost like unbelievable. Mm. Like some some of the stuff that they were saying in these toxic songs. But Well, you see it. It's promoted all throughout social media. You see what's going on out here. Absolutely. You see it with these some of these modern women. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but we see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> They're the new men, Austin. They're the new men, I'm telling you. Hey, hey, it, it, it's a dark place out there. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's rough. <laughs> Give me a break. Uh, but let, let's get into everything that you got on the way. When do you plan on releasing the new EP? Because I think it was slated, me reading the press release, it was slated for summer, but are you planning, is it going to release in the fall, the winter? When do you plan on dropping the EP? Yep. We got it September 6th. Um, it's the night after the first show on tour. So oh, wow. it's it's all coming at once. Um, yeah, first night in Chicago should be a good little like release party kind of vibe. So yeah, no, I was gonna be I'm looking forward to seeing the result of that, especially with you being in New York. It's gonna be a lot of a lot of big praise. I've seen a lot of outlets give you praise just for your music, and it's about time because people are always calling you underrated. Do you feel as though now you're finally getting the momentum and build that you deserve? Because I mean you've been going viral for years now with the covers. That's how you started out, and we'll get into that. But do you mm -hmm. feel as though this is the year that you're finally getting the just due for all the work you put in? I mean, I surely hope so. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not really for me to say um all i can do is make the music that i feel like best represents me and you know what i'm after but yeah i think a lot of people for a long time didn't realize that i've been doing this for a long time now like i'm going on like six seven eight years now um and you know the covers was just like a little stop along the way um i mean like i said i've been releasing music since 2017 i've been producing since 2014 2015 um and now I feel like it's really starting to come around because I had a little bit of a spurt maybe like for the last two, three years where I didn't really have my hands dirty with stuff, you know, and I'm that's where I thrive as an artist is have my hands in a little bit of every part of the process. And, you know, I'm producing a lot of my stuff now again. Um, I've got my hands on the pen again, writing a bunch of stuff. Um, and it just feels more genuine, you know. I, I didn't really have a lot of passion to promote something that I didn't feel like was truly mine. And now I feel like it's it's mine in total so i have to I have to do everything i can to to get it out there for people and it's just good to have that fire back no that's good and, and you've been doing this at such a young age but you originally started out with the drums because your father i heard was a dr drummer for a cover band yep yep he uh he grew up self-taught um playing the drums and as soon as i was born he got me a drum kit and i didn't really pick up on it until like sixth seventh eighth grade but uh, I hit the ground running for sure. I was I thought I was going to be a drummer for the rest of my life. And um, little did I know it was really just instilling that musical bone in my body to uh, to kind of switch paths, which I'm on now. But um, I still I still play the drums every now and then. You know, I'll go back home and my dad will talk to me about it. Well, I mean, we're always chatting about drums, but uh, it was great to have a musician in the family growing up because I feel like a lot of people don't get that uh, support, especially with something that feels so risky something that feels so like competitive and like almost like a dream. Um, so it was great to have that support from my parents. How does your father feel about your music? And did he expect you to have a soul per se? Because you could sing, you're an R&B artist. Did he expect that? Uh, honestly, I mean, he sings too. I, I grew up on country music and like classic rock and stuff like that. But he introduced me to blues with like Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, and 
I guess that kind of started a little bit, but when he first heard what I was writing, he was shocked. He definitely was super surprised. Um, you know, my parents didn't really grow up listening to R and B, but uh, you know, my dad's got some soul in him. Yeah, oh, yeah. So there you go. It doesn't when they say that the branches are far fall far from the tree, they say, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it's true. It's so true. I believe it. It, it. Then you get to high school. Then you make the decision that that's what you want to do musically. And just me learning about it because you said that there was a teacher that had to teach you the right way and that you procrastinate. So was there ever a time to where you're at now that you had to learn self-discipline to where you were able to stay focused? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I've had some great teachers along the way. And one that I could really point out, his name is Chris Rochester. Um, and he, I was in college at the time and I was playing drums and I thought I was the hottest thing in town. Um, and he came in, uh, for our second semester and just humbled me so bad. He was like, if you think you stand any chance of getting to these other schools, you need to practice and you need to like really put your head down and like, you know, stop procrastinating essentially. And ever since then, my work ethic has, has been kicked up like tenfold, um, even something as small as dropping out of college. Like I, I never, I didn't finish college, but I could still take that with me to my day-to-day -day life and make sure that even though like I'm my own boss, that I have a schedule that I attend to very like carefully and make sure I'm not just, you know, doing nothing because it's really easy to do that. It is. Then you get caught up in that cycle and there's nothing. Comes Absolutely. Out it. it's, it's horrible. Right. But where did you go to school? I went to uh, Gulf Coast State College, just like oh, okay. 30 minutes down the road uh, from my parents' house in Panama City. And um, yeah, so funny about that because I really wanted to go to Florida State. Mm -hmm. I wanted so badly to go to Florida State. I didn't get accepted. And I was like so distraught. But because I was able to go to a community college and stay with my parents, it allowed me that like comfortable, like rooming situation where I was still in my my parents' house. I was able to make the music that I felt like I could and be vulnerable. Whereas if I was in a dorm room at like a state school, I probably would still be in school. <laughs> yes, yeah, which would be awful. You took the risk. Yeah, it would be yeah. awful. I did. I did hear that, but you took some jazz courses, even though I know some of the regular classes were a waste of time and they're repetitive. Right. We know that, but you did yeah. get some experience in some of these jazz courses. I heard. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I thoroughly believe that was a big part in like my journey was one, go to school and make sure that it's something that I didn't want to do. Cause you know, if I did this and failed, then I would always look back and be like, well, what if I went to school and I liked it? Um, I didn't like it, but like you said, the jazz courses were great. Um, especially for R and B, you know, production and stuff like that. I learned how to play keys, um, learned how to play some guitar along the way, just from being next to some really great players. And, uh, yeah, jazz was one of those weird, like, stops along the way where I was in like a little quartet for a little bit playing drums really just opened my eyes to like different sides of music and why things work and the way things work with music theory it's it's all nerdy to be honest with you <laughs> but I remember because it was around the high school era where you found the love of R&B with Bryson Tiller and then just hearing about the early you Destiny Child, D'Angelo, you kind of fell into that pattern. But with hip hop, how about hip hop? Who were some of the hip hop acts that you were following during that time? Honestly, I was I was following pretty closely with Kendrick uh, yeah. around that time. Uh, I think you saw Rocky. him perform somewhere. I did. I saw him at Hangout Fest. Yeah. And, uh, in 20 i think it was 2018 i saw him um but yeah i was just keeping up with him um like i said asap rocky was like one of the first ones i was following kind of closely even tyler uh tyler the creator, tyler creator. um i mean he was rubbing people the wrong way which i kind of loved but <laughs> you need that you do you absolutely do i mean some someone to shake it up so and i've i've loved to see what he's done um you know over the last several years he's really he's really made an insane name for himself um definitely one of the more creative people that I've ever had the chance to meet, but he's like, he's, he's one of the ones. You moved around a lot too, because I heard about you were in Alabama and then you went to Arkansas. How was your time out in Arkansas? I've never had anyone on the show from that had time out there. How was it there? Yeah. Arkansas, Arkansas was a great place to grow up as a kid. I mean, I know a lot of people right now are saying kids are on their phone, whatever, need to go ride a bike. There wasn't no phones out there. We didn't oh, have good. any internet. The Wi-Fi was awful. There was like nothing. All we had to do was go outside, play in, play in the woods, play 
football, ride our bikes. Um, I grew up riding dirt bikes too, because my dad rode dirt bikes. So we would have a little track in the backyard. I mean, I would never want to go back and live there like ever, especially as an adult. But as a kid, I didn't think twice about it. You know, Arkansas to me was as good as LA. So <laughs> it's good to get away from the phones though. That's the good thing about, it. I don't know about the woods and all that stuff, but I think the phones, <laughs> are, you definitely need to step away from the phones and social media. Sure. I, do, I sure. do agree with that. Then you went out to, to Florida, Panama city, and it was interesting just me learning about it because you had to choose at that point, because I think your, your friends were more into sports because you were in sports when you were younger, I think with soccer and racing. And then once you made the move to Florida, that was when you said, all right, I'm doing the music thing. Yeah. Um, that was a really tough decision, especially moving around a lot. I say, if I never moved from Arkansas, I feel like I'd be playing soccer right now in college. Um, and so glad that's not the case my mom is too i mean she she wanted me to do the safest thing which is to play music you know i wouldn't get hurt playing music um but yeah i think it was an interesting like very pivotal point in my life um we had moved to florida i missed tryouts for for drumline so i had to play uh i had to play xylophone in the band and i was so ready to quit i was like crying to my mom and dad being like i don't want to do this anymore um and yeah it's just another part that my parents played in the whole journey being like just pushing me through they forced me they forced me to be in uh in the band in high school like my sophomore year once we moved and it was a great decision i mean it was really tough to come to grips with but um i still i still dabble here and there with some with some sports every now and then i'm more of a spectator now i like watch a little bit of everything to be honest with you Big Saints fan. I know you were happy when Huge. you saw me rocking the Saints jersey massive today. let's go how did, how did you become a Saints fan so I was born in Mobile, Alabama. Um, um, Alabama doesn't have a an NFL team. Um, and my dad growing up was always a Saints fan. Um, he was born in Alabama as well. So I just grew up in the family with it. Um, big Bama fan too. So, you know, when the Saints let me down, I always got someone to hold it down. <laughs> yeah, with Alabama, they're always winning. They're always racking they're up. They're always players. winning. You love to see it. But I love watching the Saints because they're so unpredictable. I mean, you never know what you're going to get. You're either going to want to pull your hair out or you're going to want to, you know, go out all night. <laughs> <Not gonna sleep>. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on the upcoming season and how do you feel about Carr as the quarterback i hate it yeah thank you for taking them all well th there's a double-edged sword there because because i'm a jets fan so i remember yeah. when it was coming down to it we either had the opportunity to sign rogers or Carr, and i said i don't want Carr to be my quarterback and you guys was, took him off our hands i was hopeful i can't lie to you like i was one of those delusional saints fans last year where when Carr came in i thought it was going to work and maybe i was just hoping for the best but um you know it only took me half the season to really give up but i think we got some good like we we drafted well i feel like so we'll see what happens it's like i said it's always a toss-up i think we will probably be back to being competitive in like the next five years it's gonna take some time i always wonder a big what if was Jameis winston for me i, I think he was he's, uh, he's he's one of my favorite players of all time yeah and they let him go. I was so upset, man. I, me and my friend got a. <laughs> I only know like two other Saints fans out here in LA, so we're always talking during the games and stuff. Always talking about throwing Winston and see what he can do, even if he throws it down the field for an interception. At least it's interesting to watch, you know. He made it interesting. It, I, and Carr, I don't have any faith. That's why the Raiders got rid of him. And <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I hope the Saints do well. I like the Saints. I don't mind them. We'll see. Hey, I like the Jets too. I like the Jets too. I mean, they had a they had a rough one last season, but oh, uh, yeah, because of Rogers getting injured. But at least it's Zach not the, it's gone. not to say that they can't have a good one. They can't have a good one this year. I mean, they with Rogers, they they looked good last year without him, which is kind of shocking. I mean, they definitely put up some fights. So yeah, they did. They got a yeah, great defense. As long as he stays healthy, they're going to be in the fight. They're going to be in the playoffs. So, but that's the key. He's got to stay healthy. I'd love to see it. Yeah, it's going to be interesting this year. I'm looking forward to the season. And, you know, I did want to talk about, because you mentioned you drop out of college. So what was the maneuvering process in, in you to making the moves into the industry as far as getting a manager, or publicist, and making the right moves to where you're kind of on the path right now? Um. Yeah, so I was just posting stuff on SoundCloud. Um, I was really just, like, taking stuff in my own hands. And um, just my manager hit me up on Twitter. And, you know, he was like, yo, I came across your stuff on SoundCloud. It had like a thousand plays or something like that. Um, and that's how I knew it was real. I was like, he's not trying to cling on to something that's working right now. He's just clinging on to something he thinks can work. And uh, we've been working for the, like the last seven years. Um, I think I officially got with him in January of 2018. And it's been nice because we're all very similar age. 
you know, we're all learning and growing together. And in a way it's, it's interesting because you'll make mistakes, but it's also cool because you're friends and you can learn from it and grow that bond together and like, make sure that you're, you're learning from stuff. And I know he's not taking advantage of me. They got a whole, a whole team over there, like creative team. I felt like I've been with a label for like the last seven years, but um, yeah, they just introduced me to all the people that need to help me out. Um, and yeah, there's so many different parts of this industry that like, there's a lot of moving parts. It's a, uh, it's crazy, especially like behind the scenes. It's so interesting to know how it works. Um, when in reality, I just really just want to make the music, you know? So anybody that can help me with any of the other stuff, make it easier on me to just be creative and get the music out there, then you know, I welcome them. Your first song that you released, it was it went viral, and there were some people from Brazil, a, a page from Brazil that reached out to you Did for translation. Did, did that end up going viral in Brazil as well? Yeah, it was, it was kind of insane. So like, I, I, I think I just posted it on Spotify, um, just through DistroKid. And I think this was also, this is before I had my management. So I was really just handling everything, emails and stuff like that. I woke up at like three in the morning one night to an email. And I don't know why, like, it's the most insane thing to wake up at three in the morning and check your email. But I was like, I must have been hour. so tapped in on my phone for something or like, Something awoke me. I don't know what it was inside me, but I checked my email. They were like, yo, we want to, uh, have you sent us the song? We'll translate the the lyrics into Portuguese and we'll upload it on our channel. And yeah, I mean, just like that, it was, uh, I think in like a week, it had like a million or 2 million views on YouTube, which was like how I got my start basically was mm. just like that. It kind of like kickstarted the whole process. And, uh, yeah, very thankful. Shout out sad station. That was, that was a YouTube channel that posted me. Um, I'm not sure if they're still posting, but uh, yeah, it's crazy. Little moments like that. You never know what something so small can do for you. And at the time it was small. It was very small to me. I just felt like I would just do it just because, and it really changed how everything turned out. It kicked the door in for you. It did. You mentioned something before, which was interesting that there's the industry's fascinating. There's a lot of different aspects to it behind the scenes. And it's something that was crazy to just learn about from you speaking about it was what your manager taking a risk on you when he's found you on SoundCloud, not just something based off of the moment because he had true intentions and he believed in you. Why do you think more so today that you have artists that they're just these managers and labels are just capitalizing on the moment, but per se before someone like you who actually has real talent, that's going to have longevity. Why do you think that is now? I think it's because nowadays it's just a lot more moments mm. happening. You know, there wasn't as many like viral moments happening, especially for musicians. You know, I feel like we had our YouTubers and stuff like that, but we never had some like real mainstream, like way to get your music out to everybody in the world um and you know once you get one viral moment i know it better than anybody else it's tough to do it again it's so hard to replicate um you know and someone sees one thing that does really well they snatch you up and then they're kind of just taking you off the market to be honest with you like that's that's one thing i learned is they're trying to lessen the competition for the people they already have just scoop you up off the market you know it's it's that easy but I don't know. I There's a lot of horror stories out there. I know I've never had a terrible experience, but I do know there are some people that, you know, see something in somebody and don't really want to act, act for the artist's best interest, but more so for theirs. It's a shady business. It's a dirty game. It can be. <laughs> well, it's good that you don't have any negative experiences. You got to keep it going, keep moving how you are right now. Are you with a label right now? No, I'm not. Um, I was with Warner for like because yeah, I read years. that online. Yeah, you were with Warner. Yep. Um, yeah, we split in January of this year. And um, yeah, it's been great. I mean, I feel like I've I feel like I'm meant to be this style of artist. Um, like I said, hands on. Um, the label experience was great for me. I feel like I learned so much about me and my artistry and my process and what I want out of the whole thing. And um, yeah, we just couldn't really ever see eye to eye, which is to no one's fault it's just more so we just had different ways of working and ways we wanted to do things and you know it's that simple would you consider signing to a label again if it was the right deal totally i don't i don't think it's a i don't think it's really a label issue to be honest with you um i, I do know a lot of people talk bad about labels 
it is what it is. I think it's more about the people you have on the ground with you. You know, if the people you have on the ground with you are passionate about your stuff and and want to work with you and make sure and really help you develop, not even really develop, but just be able to like just level with you and and push it forward. If they're excited about it, then it'll work. You know, all the label does nowadays to me is just funnel money towards you and and have opinions. <laughs> if you got people that got a lot of money and have good opinions, hey. It'll work. <laughs> oh, it's crazy out here. I'm telling you. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. I'm a lot. Like I said, a lot of people have horror stories with labels. I have the furthest from that. Um, you know, I would vouch for a lot of people over there. And uh, yeah, it's just more about personalities, more about, like I said, the way you want to work. Sometimes it doesn't align. And it's that simple. Because in this industry, especially on your side of things, you always got to stay creative. So I know it's tough for you and it's tough for everyone who's a creative once they get those creative blocks. So how do you handle those creative blocks and how do you, what do you do to overcome them? Um, I feel like it's changed so much over the years. Um, I used to be a big, like, big movie guy where I would just, you know, watch movies all the time. Anything to like take me out of where my head currently was um, and nothing quite like a movie or like, or gaming, you know, just something to completely move your mind away from from anything music related. Um, something that's like really involved. Uh, but honestly, now I kind of just whatever. If I have like a mental block on something, I'll just keep creating, but something completely different. Like, you know, if I'm feeling like I'm struggling writing this song for the for the album, I'll start writing a country song instead. You know, just something really left of center um, to throw my brain out of whack and then bring it back on. Cause I used to think I would just give up, move on to something else, come back to it. But I think there is something nice about training your brain to just keep pushing. Um, and not that I'm keep pushing on the same song, but I'm kind of like still functioning in a creative way. Um, but yeah, it can be tricky. I feel like it still does change like month to month here and there, depending on <laughs> what the, what the criteria is you're after, you know, like I said, if you're writing a project, you should probably, probably push through it, but, um, yeah, we'll see over these next few months. I'm about to get to writing again. Cause, uh, after the CP's out, we're going to, we're going to run up another one, hopefully before the end of the year. So. Oh, that's big. Yeah. You got a lot on the way then. So how many songs would you say, because it is easy to get that writer's block, you'll get the juices going, you'll start writing and then all of a sudden you get stuck. So how many songs would you say that you start and you just never finish? Or do you always make sure to eventually go back and finish them? Oh no. I mean, I've, I've, I've countless, um, the graveyard is, is very large. Um, <laughs> just because I feel like I am like, I'll start the beat. I'm, I'm very much like a, or used to be very hundred percent. So like I would start it, start the beat, write the song, do the whole thing. Um, but now I'm a little bit more here and there, like I'll, I'll still start a song and then I'll take it to a session work with another producer, get some other ideas from somebody. Um, and I mean, I've done so many sessions over the last three years where, you know, we get half the song and then we never revisit it. I mean, there's got to be hundreds. There's got to be hundreds, which is crazy. Even I to believe even think it. about. It's insane. I believe it, especially just how artists are when you hear about artists having 200 tracks in the vault and then they only release ending up 12 or 14 for the album. So yeah, yeah, yeah. A difficult process yeah you're yeah. still in la right now you made the move there was a quote that i was reading about years ago that it isn't what it seems moving out to la what, what did you kind of mean by that as far as it's not all to what it seems because i know everyone that's the thing if you're in the entertainment industry me personally i want to move to la very soon and i plan on doing that within the next couple months so what is it that it's not what it seems you can give some important advice there yeah, you know, it's it's actually a little tricky. I think when I said that, I was a little jaded just by L.A. in general. Um, mm. I'd also moved here right before uh, the lockdown, so okay. I didn't really get a super fair um, representation of L.A. But, I mean, yeah, we, we, we touched on earlier with the business and, you know, Shady and people trying to climb the ladder. I mean, that's you can avoid it, you know, if you really, if you really want to, and it's, it's totally possible to, to meet great people out here. And I've met countless. Um, but yeah, there's, there's some ladder climbing and you can see it for sure. Um, from like the outside looking in, but I would say a more positive take on LA would be, it's not so Hollywood glam, like in your face, like super high energy. 
there's so many different pockets of LA. Like if you really, really want to be here, you can find a pocket that suits you. You know, I've, I lived in the Valley for four years and it was like a nice slow pace and I got kind of got tired of that. So now I live downtown and now I'm kind of more of like the, into like the hustle and bustle kind of, but, um, there's just, that's my favorite part about LA. Just so many pockets. You want to be by the beach, live super slow pace. You go live by the beach. You know, if you want to go be in the thick of it, you go live on by Hollywood Boulevard and it's, you know, insane 24 seven tourists everywhere. So yeah, it's a, if you, if you really want to be out here, there's, there's a place for everybody. How is it in Hollywood? How is it? Have you been around? So cause you're in the industry, man. So how is it those, the Hollywood scene? Cause you've seen the actors, the movie sets, and yeah, we know yeah. about their parties. We know what goes on there too. So how is Every, it down there in the Hollywood scene? Everyone's avoiding Hollywood, to be honest with you. If you really? live in LA, if you live in LA, you are avoiding Hollywood. I mean, there's West Hollywood, which is like the much nicer mm-hmm. version of Hollywood. You know, I guess it's still Hollywood, but um, you know, that's closer to Beverly Hills. So that's where if you're going to see anybody you want to see. They're going to be in that area. But man, Hollywood Boulevard is is a disaster. It's a disaster. You got Spider-Man doing backflips on the corner. You got somebody with their ass crack out making cotton candy. It's just <laughs> it's insane. It it truly is insane. Um, it's it's. It's got a Taco Bell cantina, which I guess is kind of fire. But other than that, that's it. <laughs> How about the Beverly Hills scene? Let's talk more about the Beverly Hills scene. How is Beverly it there? Hills? Beverly Hills is fire. I rock with Beverly Hills. Um, I often think about where I would like where I'd want to live. Like if hopefully I end up, you know, really, really doing something in the industry. But um, you're on your Beverly way. Hills, Beverly Hills is probably one of those. Uh, you know, just super wide streets. Feels safe. Um, I mean, it's not it's not too touristy over there, believe it or not, either. So, like, I feel like that's the point that, like, turns me off from Hollywood a little bit is how touristy is. And, like, I feel like that is what makes it more of, like, a cash grab. Whereas, like, Beverly Hills is for people that, like, they don't have to cash grab. It's, you know, you go over there and there no people are going to spend money. Um, great restaurants. I honestly would love to live in Malibu. That's kind of, like, the place I'm, I'm trying to be. Yeah. You're on your way, man. I'm telling you. Appreciate it. Yeah, you already know. I, as far as music, because you, you grew up on that that pop funk too, it, it kind of reminds me. Are we talking Good Charlotte? Is that the stuff that you were listening to when you were younger? Is oh, it more, sure. Yeah. yeah. Have you yeah, thought yeah. about doing? Because I feel as though you have a wide range. Have you thought about experimenting with with pop funk and all that stuff? Because I think we we don't have that anymore. I always say that we don't have any of those yeah. bands that we used to get back in the early two thousands. Have you thought about experimenting far just further from R and B? I know you can you said you could do country, especially it comes from your father, but have you thought about doing pop funk? Um, I haven't really, but to be honest with you, like I don't I would never say never. Mm. Um like I said, maybe when I was like ten years old, I would have never guess I'd be doing R and B. Yeah. You know, and then I kinda came into my own and, and found out what my true love was. But um yeah, you're right. I do feel like there's something there missing at least now in, in, in the music industry. So, I mean, the door is wide open. I could, I could see somebody doing it. I'm not sure if I would do it on my project, but my favorite thing about being independent right now is just having the endless Creative possibilities control. to be able to do whatever I want and be like, yo, if I want to do this the next day, I can if I want. Um, but at the end of the day, my true love is R&B. So it's kind of tough to like put all this time and effort into something that I feel like it's not like truly me, um, which would be more like the pop funk kind of stuff. but I'll be definitely down to make it, you know, just to see what happens. I, I, that's my favorite part about, you know, being the position I'm in right now is just being able to make whatever. If it doesn't come out, that's fine. It kind of just, but it's for me to enjoy. So, no, you got you got to do what makes you happy at the end of the day. And you got the new record out, Crush. Kind of get into that, and just because you have some other artists featured on there, we're working with them. So, kind of get into that record. That's a yeah. new one. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this one's definitely a little bit more pop driven. Um which kind of feels like I was in that era in like 2018, 2019 kind of. So I feel like I'm coming back to my old self a little bit, but um, yeah, just this uh, great artist, uh, Sunkiss. Um, he, he hit me up about the song and he was like, yo, I really want to do this song with you. Um, and he got uh, Bryn Joy on it as well, who I have a lot of mutuals with Bryn. Um, super great guy. I met him on the shoot for, for the song. Um, but me and Sunkiss have known each other for like a year and um yeah, just a lot of mutual fans. We knew we could do something special with it. And uh, he sent me the song and I was like, it just kind of felt a little undeniable to me, like the the hook and everything. He told me to write my verse. 
and uh yeah it was super easy super super easy like very hard working people i i'm always down to work with people that have a good work ethic and are down to really work the song and you know i feel like that's kind of what we did so yeah no i'm telling you man because I, I mentioned the expanded before into other music genres but are there other aspects of the industry you want to get into i feel as though fashion might be something that you could do yeah i mean i i i love fashion for sure it's something that took me a little bit of time to really dive into um but you know when you live in a place like new york or like la you see all these people and it's kind of inspiring you at first it might be a little bit you might be turned off by it because it is a little interesting here and there but it truly is a form of self-expression um just another way outside of music for me to kind of express myself and and kind of show people what i'm about um like i said we went to new york for fashion week super incredible experience um i would love to go again i mean i went last year but it was in september and it was the most human experience of my life and that's coming from florida so <laughs> <laughs> it was it was insane especially for fashion week like you don't want to be sweating but um yeah love fashion would love would love to walk in some shows um would love to go to paris fashion week as well that's another thing too i actually need to travel more but um yeah, whatever can whatever can get me traveling more, I guess. You're in the perfect place, Cali. Uh, there's, the, I'm I'm working to get there. I'm gonna be there very soon. But a lot of people are. A lot of people want to go there because it, to pursue their dreams, and that, that's the place sure. to be. To be honest with you, if you want to be there. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a it's a great place. There's there was probably like the first two years, like I said, I was around the time COVID. of lockdown. I was not feeling it at all. But like the last three years, I've been. I've been in love with it. Like I said, you can really find your pocket. If you find that, it's home sweet home. And that's what you call it now, see? It's your home. I do. I love it. I really do. I mean, the weather. If it's not for the weather. Oh, the weather, the, that's the best. It's warm. It's the food. It's the food. It's all the stuff you can do around the city. Um, You know, you can go skiing up north or you can go to the beach or you can go hiking. It's like, if you're an outside person, like I said, I'm more of like, I spend my time indoors. <laughs> <laughs> creating that's what you got to do and sometimes Absolutely. it's better that way to just stay out of stay out of sight because especially when you're a public figure you got people coming up to you and you, i i get what, what you're going through a lot of people do especially with all the celebrities out there they, they're yeah yeah anytime they go out there they got the paparazzi following them around it's crazy that's one of the crazier parts about la it's like seeing paparazzi like obviously they're not coming to talk to me yet but they seeing them like follow people and asking them questions and all this stuff. I'm like, TMZ. I could, I could see how that gets a little like, I could see how that rubs an artist the wrong way or rubs a celebrity the wrong way, um, just because they really don't have any like personal boundaries or like they, they do not care like what wow. your day was like. They don't care about anything. They're just trying to get that one liner. <laughs> so, it can definitely get mixy. I'm, I'm just trying to stay out of all that. To be honest with you, though. Yeah. You just want to do what you love doing for a living and the, the the notoriety comes with it. That's the type of person you are. And I respect that because a lot of times people are just out here for the cloud. We see who that is. It's pretty much easy now to see who that is. The people doing yep. the most outrageous stuff to get known. And if people aren't focusing on talent anymore, it's a shame. Yeah. I, I, I didn't get into this to be famous at all. Like I said, I used to just upload my music on Spotify through yeah. DistroKid and just be my, be my, better in my parents house just that's that's what made me happy and that's what still makes me happy um the other stuff comes along with it the good and the bad so um yeah a little bit a little bit of eyes on you never hurt nobody but it is what it is yeah i'm telling you that billy eilish cover too she saw it i know she did there's no oh, way yeah. that she didn't yeah there is there is no there's no possible way she hasn't either seen it or heard it i mean um her brother phineas commented on the original video yeah. so he probably sent it to her i don't know if someone on her press team was like don't repost this don't do nothing or she felt we know what goes it. on they don't want anyone but, to be successful we know it, we know what it is it is what it is i know i know uh her team and they're they're all love to be honest with you but uh who knows yeah who are some people you're looking to work with? Because I know we got the upcoming EP coming out, but is there some collaborations, hip hop wise, R and B, that you do want to get on some songs in the future? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Kehlani is one of them. Um, I know she's getting ready to put out a project, so I might have missed the mark a little bit there. But uh, there's always the next one. Um, I don't see either of us getting ready to stop making music. Um, I really rock with Ty Dolla Sign as well. Um, even less, even less of like 
I just want to be in the studio with these people and see how they work. You know, I want to, I just want to be a fly on the wall. Uh, it's not even about having their name on the song when it comes out. I just want to watch how they work and, and, and see them work in the studio with, with other people. But, um, even some, I mean, I'm a huge Bieber fan. You can pro probably hear it in the music as well. Um, super inspired by him and, uh, a lot of his, a lot of his like earlier sound. Um, even somebody like Tyler too, like I mentioned, I think, I think that would be a bit of a layup in terms of like a collab. Um, just like I said, people that are very hands-on. I know Ty is very musical, um, plays the bass, sings his face off, writes, you know, anybody that's down to to really do it and not just have it like placed in the palm of their hand and palm of their hand. But uh, yeah, I mean, the list is endless. I feel like every time I talk about this, I say somebody new just because there's just so many talented people out there. Brent Fiaz, he's another big inspiration of yours. Love, love Brent. Um, yeah, love, love Brent. Ever since uh, Saunderson came out. Um, yeah, ever since I heard that album for the first time, my whole perspective on on like R&B and, and the approach kind of changed. So shout out to Brent. Yeah. Who's your R&B GOAT of all time? Who's that one for you? Oh, no. R&B GOAT. Um... I really love, I do really love Usher. Mm. I like Joe a lot. I do like Joe a lot. Um, it's tough to say. I love Chris Brown too. I do love Chris Brown. Um, and he's been doing it ever since he was just so, so young. So, and some of my favorite stuff from him was when he was like 16, 17. So yeah, the run, of um, eight, the run of era. I just love, I, I mean, he's so talented. He can dance write sing he does it all you know um so i think i think that is truly what it is too i mean usher can dance too um i love usher neo, he, did, he, had a, neo, he did a great super bowl performance he did he did and usually that's a good like telltale on who who really can uh stand the test of time he's gonna be one for sure i mean um i even think about people that are like a little like mario to me is a little underrated mm -hmm. in terms of like singing ability at least um he's i didn't even really listen to him a lot growing up but you know over the last decade i kind of like dove back in his discography and i was just blown away because that's why i think he's underrated i mean as a kid i was listening to usher and chris brown and all this stuff but i never really tapped in on mario like that but he's insane absolutely insane how do you feel about with because Usher's Confessions just albums today because you you speak about you it, your fear of making a song that does well for a while and you're playing it but then after so long it doesn't hit the same as it does and just a lot of albums today i feel as though there's you don't get an album that you listen in order it's very rare where you can listen like confessions you listen from the the first track to the to the end uh, what are your thoughts on just to how albums are made today it's just completely different yeah it, it totally is um I, it's it's tough for me to say why that is um because i wasn't really in the industry back then when i felt like albums were the thing that people were after um i still think at the very tip 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 top of the iceberg albums are the thing mm -hmm. still um for like you know the grammys and stuff everyone must be nominated for a grammy um and that usually takes an album but uh i don't know i feel like i feel like albums are kind of coming back around i think there was a bit of a time over the last decade where people were more focused on singles and just getting that radio hit rather than putting together a really, really, really good project and then having the people decide the hit, you know? Um, and I feel like that's kind of what happened back in the day, but there's been some, there's been some great albums I've listened to this year. Um, I've listened to, uh, I love the Charlie XCX album, uh, a little bit more like dance kind of stuff. Um, I've really loved the Claro album as well. Uh, more of like that indie vibe. Yeah. There's been, there's been some more albums that make me feel like it's starting to come back, which is great. I mean, I haven't put out an album yet, so it's hard for me to. I did hear that really, that you really th there were some things this. I was reading that you don't didn't want to put an out an album. Is that still a thing where you don't want to release an album? I would love. I absolutely, absolutely want to. <laughs> I just want there to be like. I just really want the spark in me to like, want that. 
you know, mentally I'm like, I love albums. That's the only way I listen to music. I don't make playlists. I don't listen to singles. I'm listening to an album. Like every time I get in the car, anytime I get the aux, I'm running an album. So it's tough for me to say that I don't have an album out, but um, I just know that I'm so picky that whenever I do an album, I want to make sure it's perfectly how I want to be able to do it. Um, and there's no telling when I, when I can say that's going to happen. Hopefully, hopefully next year, I've been saying that for three years. We'll see. I'm going to be looking forward to it, man. Well, Austin, Appreciate is there anything else you would love to let your fans know? Anything else, especially about the upcoming EP that we didn't talk about? Um, I mean, like I said earlier, there's going to be two parts. So this is just part one. Part one. Um, y'all write that one down. Uh, it's kind of like an album. It's like a double-sided EP. So, Yeah, we're getting the first one real soon here. But man, Absolutely. Austin, thank you for coming on the show, man. I had a great time talking with you about your career and just everything that you got going on right now. And it's going to be it's going to be up from here, man. You got Crush. That's a brand new single. Make sure you go check that out. You got to go tune into that. And then that's just the the prelude, really, to the EP. Absolutely. Appreciate you, man. Of course. And shout out to Andres for getting us connected, too. Let's go. You already know. Let me know they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter. Austin Music. Yep. That's uh, yep. ASTN Music on pretty much everything. I keep it easy for y'all. Yeah, there you go. Go tap in with him, man. Austin, until the next time, all right? Take care. Appreciate you. All right, man. Peace out. Thank you, man. Yeah, of course. Anytime, man.